Hello, thank you for viewing the webinar about your LEA's recovery analysis and results. The purpose of this session is to review some of the resources available to you and your district. Our goal is to make your data work for you. And this quote sums up that sentiment well. Data is not about adding more to your plate. Data is about making sure you have the right things on your plate. We hope that you will find the reports on students learning after the pandemic useful as you and your team continue to plan for students recovery. Your report includes empirical results on the students testing in your district. These reports are provided as a result of a collaboration between the EVOS team at SAS and the Office of Learning and Recovery at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. For over 15 years, EVOS has analyzed student learning trends in North Carolina using standardized assessments administered across the state. The basis of all EVOS models is to follow the progress of individual students over time. After the pandemic, the EVOS team and the Office of Learning and Recovery worked to develop a model that would quantify the pandemic's impact on student learning as well as their subsequent recovery. There are state level reports as well as individual LEA reports available for the 2020-21 school year and the 2021-22 school year. The state reports are publicly available and might be a useful point of comparison for your LEA's reports. There are also district, school, and student recovery results available in the EVOS web application, but please note that these are different from EVOS growth measures used for district, school, and teacher growth. We'll talk more about that later in this webinar. Today's webinar will cover the following topics. First, I'll review the general approach to the analysis. Second, I'll review the information provided in last year's LEA report, which I think will be helpful context for then reviewing information from this year's LEA report. Finally, I'll discuss additional supports available to you regarding students' learning, including those in the EVOS web application. The EVOS team focuses on students learning over time as measured by statewide standardized assessments. Each year, EVOS receives student test scores for M-Class, EOG, BOC, ACT, and other assessments like those for CTE. There is a longitudinal database that follows the progress of individual students over time. The pandemic and recovery analyses use this information as it is one way to quantify the pandemic's effects on student learning. Of course, the pandemic impacted many aspects of students, and this is just one piece of the picture. But the idea of the analysis is this. If the pandemic never happened, how would we have expected students to perform? And how does this performance differ from how students actually performed? In other words, the premise is, what is the counterfactual had the pandemic never happened? If students had had the typical pre-pandemic schooling experience, how would we have expected students to perform? So more specifically, the analysis compares students' projected performance established prior to the pandemic to their actual performance on state assessments. And for some of you, Projected performance might sound familiar. The projections used in the pandemic and recovery analyses are pretty much the same thing as the projections in the EVOS web application. The EVOS web application includes student level projections to future tests that the student has not yet taken. These projections are based on the student's prior testing history as well as testing histories for all students who just took that assessment. So for example, if you have a student who last tested in grade five, then that student has testing history from math, reading, and science in grade five, math and reading from grade four, and math and reading from grade three. A projection to math grade seven assumes that the student had the average schooling experience from grade five to grade seven. And this average schooling experience 
is based on the cohort of students who just took the math grade seven test. For these students, we know how all the math grade seven test takers scored on their assessments from math, reading and science in grade five, math and reading from grade four, and math and reading from grade three. The model will use all this information to determine, based on what was actually observed with the test takers, what is the average schooling experience for math grade seven test takers who had a similar testing history as our grade five student? Collectively, this information provides a projected score. In the EVOS web application, the student projection provides a probability to each of the possible performance levels on the future assessment. And here's an example of what that looks like. Some of you might have already seen our new student report that shows the prior testing history for an individual student shown here with the green circles, gray squares, and gray triangle. Taking into account the student's prior testing history and the average schooling experience, there is a projected score to the future assessment. The projected score represents the most likely score for the student, and it is shown on the graph as the dashed line. You can see this bell curve turned on its side. It shows the range of possible scores for our student, where the scores that are most likely are close to the center dashed line, and the scores that are least likely are far away from the center dashed line. The pandemic and recovery impact analyses use the projected scores shown by the dashed line as it represents the score associated with the average schooling experience. So to bring this back to the impact analysis, we have a projected score for each student. The analysis then compares the projected score to the student's actual score on state assessments. The analysis aggregates comparisons across all students and for certain student groups to assess whether the students underperformed relative to projections. And this is the key information as part of your LEA report. I heard someone say once about the pandemic, we were all in the same storm, but we were not in the same boat. And at the state level, we've seen that's true. Some students had more challenging learning environments during the pandemic and they were more impacted by the pandemic than other students. Some assessments were more impacted than others, and some grades were more impacted than others. It's critical information to know what happened in your LEA with your students. In other words, what boats were your students in? As a reminder, the LEA report is a diagno diagnosis tool, not a prescription tool. Local knowledge and expertise are critical to add other pieces to the picture to understand more of the pandemic's impacts, and local knowledge and expertise will provide the best path for planning students' recovery. One more thing about the analysis. The aggregated student results are reported in effect sizes. This is a common statistical metric that puts results from different assessments on a common scale. If you have the difference between expected and actual score for a given assessment, such as math grade seven, it is in the scaling units of the test, which may or may not be comparable to other assessments, such as reading grade seven or math grade six or biology. This analysis wants to compare results from different assessments, so the results are converted to effect sizes. More specifically, the difference between students' actual and expected scores can be converted to effect sizes by dividing the difference by the student level standard deviation for the assessment. This process puts each difference into context for an assessment so that you can get a sense of whether the difference is a meaningful difference. Effect sizes can be interpreted as follows. A small effect size means that the effect size is less than 0 0.05. A medium effect size ranges from 0 0.05 to 0 0.20. A large effect size is greater than 0 0.2. Note that effect sizes can be positive or negative. Now that we have reviewed the general models and effect sizes, Let's move on to what LEAs received in last year's report. 
Last year's LEA report used data through the 2020-21 school year. The average schooling experience was based on the 2018-2019 cohort of test takers, and students' prior testing history used data through the 2018-19 school year. This information was used to provide projected scores to the 2020-21 school year. In other words, the student's projected score to the 2021 school year is compared to their actual score from the 2021 school year. And this difference is aggregated to show student level trends. This is part of the state level report, which was made publicly available, and it's similar to what you see in your LEA report. Each row represents a specific assessment listed on the right hand side of the page excuse me, left-hand side of the page. Each bar chart represents the average effect size for a group of students in a tested content area, such as reading grade seven. In other words, what's the average difference between students' expected and actual scores? There are two groups of bar charts, one representing the difference between students' projected and actual scores on the 2021 assessments, which you can think of as the pandemic impact. And there is another group of bar charts, which represents the difference between students projected and actual scores on the 2018 assessments. The 2018 data is shown because it provides context for the 2021 results. It's historical data and can show if there were gaps among student groups before the pandemic started. If there was, then that suggests ongoing edu educational factors rather than a pandemic impact for these gaps. And you might wonder why the historical comparison is from 2018 rather than 2019. That's because some tests changed in 2019, so 2018 was a better comparison for this purpose. Each group of bar charts has a line set at zero. Zero represents expected growth. Bars that are close to the expected growth line mean that on average, students made the expected progress. In other words, students maintained their pre-pandemic trajectories. Bars to the right of expected growth mean that, on average, students made more than the expected growth. They scored higher than we would have expected based on the pre-pandemic average schooling experience. Bars to the left of expected growth mean that, on average, students made less than the expected growth. They scored lower than expected based on their pre-pandemic trajectories. In comparing the bars between 2018 and 2021, there are distinct differences. On the left-hand side for the 2018 historical comparison, the bars are fairly close to zero. Some bars have average positive effects and other bars have average negative effects, but all of the effects are pretty small. In contrast, on the right-hand side for 2021, almost all of the bars are negative and some of them represent medium or even large effect sizes. This means that with the exception of English 2, on average, students fell short of their expected scores in 2021. The page we're seeing now provides the average effect size for all students in a given content area but there are similar pages in the report that provide the average effect size for groups of students, meaning one bar is based on the average effect size for say English learners, and there's another bar that's based on the average effect size for non-English learners. This information is really useful for understanding what boat students were in during the pandemic. Are there gaps between student groups? How do the gaps compare to what was observed in the historical comparison? At the state level, there were some surprising trends, so it's not necessarily what you might expect. In looking at this page from the state report, I can see that math and science were more impacted than reading, and it looks like perhaps the earlier grades were more impacted than the upper grades. This page provides the big picture, and the other pages on student groups provide the more detailed information. Now let's move on to this year's report. This year's report includes assessment data from the 21-22 school year, so the projections are made three years in advance, 
from 2019 to 2022. The analysis now includes three years of data. The 2017-18 historical comparison, the 2020-21 pandemic impact, and the 2021-22 learning recovery. The additional year takes into account the post-pandemic academic experience. Comparing the 2022 results with the 2021 results and histo historical comparison yields insight into students' recovery. The new reports also added a new type of information. It is important to consider the distribution of student level effect sizes within the state average effect size. In other words, what is the proportion of students with a large positive, medium positive, small positive, small negative, medium negative, and large negative effect size? Even for assessments that had on average a large negative effect size, there are some students who exceeded their expected scores. And it might be useful to know what kind of students these were and what were their learning experiences during and after the pandemic. So this is what the results look like in this year's report. There's a lot to take in, so we'll break this up into sections and go through each section one at a time. Again, we're looking at results from the state level report and the bar charts look similar to what you had last year with two groups of bar charts and the list of assessments on the very left side of the page. However, this year, the pandemic impact bars are on the left side of the page. We have the new 2022 recovery impact bars on the right side of the page. We didn't have room for a third set of bars for the historical comparison. So this information is plotted in each section as an open diamond on the page. Same as before, there is a line at zero representing expected growth. Bars to the left of the green line mean that, on average, students fell short of their expected scores. Bars to the right of the green line mean that, on average, students exceeded their expected scores. In comparing the bars in 2021 and 2022, the bars tend to be to the left of the green line, meaning that, on average, students fell short of their expected scores. However, you can see that the bars are less negative in 2022 compared to 2021, meaning that students tended to score closer to their expected scores. This page is from the state level report, and it's possible that your LEA shows a different pattern. Again, you can gain valuable insight into the pandemic's impact and students' recovery by looking at the bar charts. What were the subjects and grades that were most impacted by the pandemic? Where did you target your resources in 2022? And where are the gaps that remain after the 2022 school year? How does this vary by student group? Now let's move from the center of the page to the edges. The center of the page focuses on the average effect size for a group of students, but the edges show more detailed information about that average. This new information is based on individual student residuals or students, the difference for students um, between their expected and actual scores. These student residuals are aggregated into categories according to whether, whether they represent a small, medium, or large positive effect size, as well as a small, medium, or large negative effect size. The positive effect sizes have purple colors and the negative effect sizes are shaded blue. You can see that even in subjects and grades that had a large negative effect size, there are some students who had a large positive effect size. You can also see that the proportion of students with a negative effect size is generally smaller in 2022 compared to 21. Again, this information is useful for understanding the different experiences of your students within each subject area. To bring this all together, this year's recovery analysis was focused on two key questions. To what extent do students' pre-pandemic trajectories and their actual performance results from 2021-22 vary by student group and contextual factors? 
And number two, how do any observed differences compare to 2020, 21, as well as pre-pandemic historical trends? And as I've mentioned already, it's important to consider your LEA's results in context with the state results. It's important to consider the different subjects and grades, student groups, and differences between historical trends. In our live webinars, we asked LEAs to open their reports and ask any questions. You can pause the recording, review your report, and send any questions you have to evossupport at sas.com, or just click on contact us in the, in, in the EVOS web application at ncdpi.sas.com. As our final agenda topic, I want to review a few places where you can find additional resources related to this impact analysis. First, I've included the link to the state level reports. This link includes a press release and an FAQ that you might find useful. Second, of course, you have two years of your LEA reports. Third, there are additional resources within the EVOS web application. And I'll get into a few more details about this in just a minute. There are district and school diagnostic reports that show the difference between students' actual and pre-pandemic projected score. There are student reports that show what a student's projected score was in the prior year. And the EVOS login page has a great resource that shows you how to navigate the EVOS website and interpret results with an eye towards understanding the pandemic's impact and students' recovery. This resource includes click-by-click -click instructions as well as guiding questions for interpreting your results. Let's go through samples of the web-based reports. This is a sample district or school diagnostic report. You might already know that you can graph growth measures for different groups of students to understand learning trends in the district or school. But in addition to selecting growth for this graph, one of the measurement options is the difference between actual and pre-pandemic projected score. You can plot this on the y-axis and then select your x-axis. I like this one that groups students according to their expected performance level, but there are a lot of options for you to choose. The LEA report that you received this year and last year summarizes information across your LEA, but this report is a great way to dig into results for individual schools. Another resource is the student report. We went over a sample student projection earlier. This image looks similar, except that it shows the past projected score for a test that the student has now already taken, rather than a future projected score for a test that the student has not yet taken. So if we made a projection in 2019 to the 2021 Math 7 test, then the past projected score shows us what was the student's projected score given back in 2019. On this graph, the dashed line represents the student's most likely score if they had the average schooling experience. This information can be compared to their actual score which is shown by the green dot above the bell curve. It's useful to understand how individual students scored relative to their projected scores over these pandemic years. In this example, our student exceeded their projected score, but we know this wasn't the case for most students. One final clarification is that, while the EVOS web application has several reports and metrics related to the impact analyses, these results should not be confused with the EVOS growth measures. While there are some similar similarities between the models, they are ultimately measuring two different things and have two different purposes. The results won't necessarily align. EVOS growth measures are relative growth measures. They are based on the growth observed in the most recent year. This means that the average growth is always centered on zero. Statewide, about half of districts and about half of schools will have a positive growth measure and about half of them will have a negative growth measure. Then, of course, each of these growth measures are categorized into does not meet expected growth, meets expected growth, and exceeds expected growth. And most of the growth measures are in the middle category. While your LEA might show a different pattern, the state results are always centered on zero. 
The measures for the impact analysis are not relative measures. They measure growth relative to the average pre-pandemic experience observed in the 2018-19 school year. And statewide for most assessments, there are more districts and schools with a negative growth measure because on average, students did not have the average typical schooling experience during the pandemic. The interpretation guide that was provided along with your LEA results has more information about these distinctions if you are interested in learning more. In closing, I want to thank you for your time today. I hope this webinar has been helpful in understanding your LEA's reports and other resources available to you. If you have any questions about your LEA report, please do not hesitate to contact the Office of Learning and Recovery or the EVOS team through EVOS support or contact us. Thanks and have a great day.